Okay, so welcome to this afternoon's session. I've just spotlighted Julie for you. Julie White is a wellness coach and consultant. She's also a mental health first aid instructor and her session this afternoon is Five Ways to Wellbeing. And so I'm really looking forward to sharing the session with you all and uh, something really important for all of us, whether you're a coach or somebody that's interested in coaching. So over to you, Julie. Okay. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction there, Jo. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to be part of this amazing summit. I've been in all of the sessions so far um, and uh, yeah, so many takeaways and such a variety of content to uh, be part of and to share. So, um, yeah, so I'll, um, I'll get starting off. So I'm bringing to you today the topic of five ways to well-being in coaching. And uh, as part of that, I want to give you a little bit of background as to why that's something that I'm so passionate about, why well-being is so important. And as Joe kindly introduced, yes, I'm a wellness coach and consultant and a mental health first aid instructor. So I've got a few different strings to my bow. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about me as well in terms of my background and how I got here. So that's moving on. Yeah, so a few little pictures to show a bit about me. So first picture I've got there is uh, my whole self picture. I put on my whole self day back in October last year. Uh, as a key part of Mental Health First Aid England's awareness strategy around mental health and well-being. And that hopefully shows you, you'll see around that, a few of the things that are really important to me and show the whole person that I am. Um, I'm a tea addict, uh, very rarely seen without a cup of Yorkshire tea, although today it's a bit too warm for that. Um, I'm a dog mum, as the right hand picture shows you. Uh, that's my little puppy, Luca, uh, who is my world. Um, I'm also a coach. I'm a brownie guide leader, so uh, that's my Monday evening bit of fun um, where I uh, help young people to learn more uh, about life skills and, and connection and so on. Uh, so I'm a mental health first aid. It's some of my hobbies as well on there. I'm an acrobat. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, then follow me on Instagram and you might see the odd picture there. I'm also a book, book lover. I am surrounded by piles of books right now. You can't see all of them, just a few of them on my bookshelf behind. Um, and I also live with a few invisible health conditions, which is an important part of why well-being is, in, is an important message that I want to share. Uh, I live with migraines, uh, hypothyroidism, and more recently I was diagnosed with ADHD. So all of those things play a part into who I am and a part of my whole self. And they all also mean why what well-being looks like to me will be different to what well-being might look like to you. And I also like to bring a bit of fun. So that's a picture of me in the middle there. Uh, about five-year-old me, I think I was there with uh, hair in mind of its own. And today's not much better. The, uh, the frizz uh, is out in full force in this heat, unfortunately. So that's a little bit about me. And from a professional point of view, uh, I also, I've had a career in HR, in hospitality, uh, and um, predominantly uh, in legal services, uh, in finance sector, in care, so a bit of everything really in terms of, of my HR career and most recently I've also been embarking on getting the professional qualification to back up my coaching experience so I'm doing my level seven executive coaching uh, and it's important to me to look after my own well-being but also to help and support others in looking after their own well-being and in HR. Um, we have a tendency to be caring for others and thinking about others a lot so uh, I'm looking to, to try and uh, bring that awareness of our own well-being to, to those in the HR um, profession in particular to make sure that they're looking after themselves. So why well-being and why is it important to me? Because, yeah, we've all got these different aspects and different sides to themselves. But for me, uh, it all really started about 10 years ago um, where a number of life events Kind of dominoed one after the other and impacted me significantly and had me stop and take stock and realize in space of a short few months i um my relationship that i've been in for 14 years came to an end uh, the job that i was in um i was struggling to perform in because of going through that significant life change and all, all through that process as well it involved selling the house and starting again 
Uh, and it was during that transition period of time that I realized I really needed to look after my own well-being. And that's something that I neglected quite a lot. And that was the start of my real journey into uh, making sure that I did look after my own well-being um, and understood more about mental health, resilience, mindset. And I went about rebuilding my own well-being one small step at a time. So I'm curious as a coach, curious is a, is a common word I use. And um, I'm curious, what does well-being mean for you? I'd love it if you could pop in the chat what well-being means for you before I go on to share what potential definition of well-being might be. Balance. Absence of stress, looking after health and happiness, peace, joy, contentment, prioritizing self-care and happiness, healthy mind and body, joy over anxiety. We're going quite quick, I can't quite see all of them, but that's great. Being best version of yourself effortlessly. I like that, Katie. The good balance of mental, physical and spiritual well-being. Having fun, yeah. Being yourself, looking after yourself. These are all great, brilliant, thank you. So yes, I've got a definition here for you um, from, uh, this is from uh, an article, High Level Wellness by Dunn, that defines well-being or wellness is not the absence of disease, illness or stress, but the presence of optimal physical and behavioral health, purpose in life, active involvement in satisfying work and joy, and joyful relationships and happiness. So very much what you've all been popping in the chat slightly different definitions for each of us because it, it will be slightly different what is optimal physical and behavioral health for one person might be different to somebody else what our purpose is in life is going to be different for each and every one of us but it's that satisfying work and that ties in with some of the, the other um, speakers we've had throughout the summit today talking about values and purpose uh, and those joyful relationships and happiness being really, really important so why five ways to well-being? That's my next question. So the five ways to well-being, um, a set of evidence-based research from the New Economics Foundation. So this comes from 2008, the UK government published the Foresight Project on this. And the ambition was to look at how we could um, look into the challenges that we were gonna face affecting our well-being over the next 20 years. So that's 2008. So we're three quarters of the way through that 20 year challenge. And by heck, we've had a few challenges along the way. But I think we'll remember that these were the um, factors that were really brought to the fore um, when we were all um, faced with the challenges of staying home and thinking about how we look after ourselves uh, whilst we're perhaps disconnected from day to day. So there's five key areas. There's connect. So talking about connecting with the people around us, it's a great way to remind ourselves that we're important that we're valued we are as human beings we are wired for connection so it's important to to remember that taking notice pausing and taking notice of the thoughts emotions and surroundings paying attention to what we as individuals need taking notice and being grateful for the small things appreciating our surroundings being active and there is a link between staying active and positive mental health and well-being. So making sure we're regularly moving our bodies is, is really important uh, for both our mental and our physical health. Keeping learning. Learning new things is also a great way to meet new people, boost our confidence, and that in turn helps our well-being. And then lastly, at the five is give. So there is a lot of research that shows that there's a link between doing good things and increasing our well-being and that self-care and well-being are fundamentally linked. So those are the five ways to well-being if you haven't necessarily seen them before. And self-care is the foundation of all of that. So that involves things such as managing our boundaries, navigating adversity, managing stress uh, and the ability to create and sustain good habits. So 
all of these um, come into one another uh, and they're intrinsically linked. So I'm going to ask you now to just think about your own well-being wheel. You may well have come across the wheel of life or the wheel of, of well-being um, previously, uh, and it's just simply using a visual tool of a wheel or a circle and the segments in that circle to reflect and think about what your own um, current state is and therefore think about how you might move forward with that. So this tool, so say I've, I've given you there, a, a, if you've got a pen and paper, I'd love you to draw a circle, break it into five segments and then just think about each of these ones and what you might uh, what that might look like in each of those areas. And as you think about that, give yourself a satisfaction rating of one to 10. So, and then draw that within that segment. So one being the smallest and at the center of the circle, 10 being a full segment. And then just, uh, just note down that, don't overthink it, but just take a moment. And then we're going to, to think about which areas you want to prioritize working on and potentially set yourself three SMART goals. So that's one way to approach the wheel. Another way to approach it might be to think, what am I gonna stop? What am I gonna start? And what am I gonna continue doing? If you think about the things that are part of your week, your routine, is there anything that you want to make sure that you continue to do or do more of? Is there anything you want to add into that? What are you already doing? What perhaps did you used to do? and have stopped doing? What would you like to start doing or do more of? But also, what do you want to do less of? Okay, because some things we can fill our days and our time with lots of things that actually aren't doing us much good. So it's important to reflect and note that and think, is there something we need to, uh, to maybe stop? Another way that we might approach it as well is to reflect back on a time, to try and remember a particular point in time when you were feeling that positive, that happiness. Uh, and what did that look like? You felt connected at that time because, and complete that sentence, you were active at that time because, you were learning at that time because, yeah, and continue that with the five. I'm not expecting you to have an answer to these. Don't worry if you're not able to answer them, but take this away as food for thought to reflect on your own well-being. The point is remembering a time when you're happy, comfortable, healthy, and asking yourself, what were you aware of? Or what are you now aware of when you reflect back on that that was part of creating that well-being for you? I'm curious if anyone's comfortable to, to share anything in the chat. Is there anything that's showing up for them that they are thinking um, they might want to do more of or do less of maybe, um, or that you want to, to pick up doing again if you haven't done it for a while? Is there anything that's showing up for you in any of these categories? Stacey says, connect and learning. So those are your priorities. Okay. Being more active. Diane wants to, to increase give. Yeah. That's great. Well, let's take that into as, I, as I'll, I'll walk you through each of those and give some examples. And we'll look at some examples of how that ties in with coaching as well. And you're saying connect, loss of social skills and connections since the lockdowns. Yeah, it's, uh, there's many people that I'm realising and I've stopped and thought that I've lost connection with them over the course of working from home and, and working remotely. And it's important that there's certain people I want to reconnect with and rebuild those. Yeah. So let's start there. Let's start with connect. OK, what does connect mean to you? When it comes to well-being, other people matter and evidence shows that good relationships, whether that's family, friends, wider community are important for our well-being. 
and getting in touch with our own needs is also really, really important as we do that. But we're connecting with the right people that are lighting us up, that are supporting us. And we're building those strong connections that give us that sense of happiness and self-worth. So I've just picked out a few key ones that tie in with the coach and coachee relationship. It's really, really important as a coach that we connect with ourselves and we understand self. It's one of the core competencies of coaching. So connecting with ourselves, whether that's through supervision or through our own um, coaching experience, but connecting with ourselves is really, really important. Connecting with our clients, creating that connection uh, with our clients. Again, really crucial to that relationship and building that relationship for it to be a successful coaching relationship. Being genuine as we uh, connect with our coachees and giving that attention as part of that connection to uh, the coachee in that relationship, giving our attention there. Notice in the chat, Brian said, connect brings up guilt for me. As an introvert, I don't seem to give enough time to friends as they expect. Well, Brian, it's about what's important to you. Um, and maybe it's about managing those expectations as you do that. That reflects on them uh, more than it does on you, Brian. But if it's something that you recognise and you want to, to work on, um, then it, you know, it's worth working through those emotions and what you're feeling there. Take notice. What does take notice mean to you? Is it looking out the window and seeing the birds in the trees? Is it listening to your own body, your own emotions? Is it picking up on the non-verbal cues that you see around you in those communications with others? It can be really easy to stop taking notice and lose touch with the way our bodies are feeling. And we can get stuck in our heads and our thoughts um, and stop noticing what's actually driving those thoughts and the emotions and behavior that's going on. So taking notice and being present and in the moment, setting aside concerns and getting into the right mindset before a coaching session is really, really important. One useful tip is to use a countdown to calm. So counting down five, four, three, two, one through the senses. So five things that I see, four things that I can hear, three things that I feel, two things I can smell and one thing that I can taste. So by engaging our senses, it brings us right into the present moment and helps us to be firmly present. Another technique we might use is, is the stop technique. So for grounding ourselves to stop, S for stop, T for take a breath, so to notice our breath, O to observe, so observe how that's feeling for us before we then P proceed. So that's just a couple of tools that you might use there to help you stop and take notice. And from that point, in terms of the coaching relationship, it's so important to be present, to prepare ourselves and ground ourselves. We engage with those senses and to say, pick up on those nonverbal cues. There is so much that comes from what we communicate through our body language and our positioning and, and so on um, that can really um, say a lot about what's really, really going on and can help to usefully feedback um, what you're noticing as a coach. Seeing the comments that Andrew's added, it's easy to see tasks everywhere in the house, the garden, and taking notice to me means seeing things as they are, appreciating rather than thinking about what needs doing. Absolutely. Sometimes it's, it is really important to just notice how things are uh, and, and be kind to ourselves and stop thinking about the doings. We are human beings and not human doings. And sometimes we can get so caught up in the doing um, that we forget uh, about just being and being present and we get distracted by all those other to-do lists, can't we? So be active. And I've picked a pair of roller boots for my picture here, particularly because this was what kick-started me 
getting um, back to finding myself when I hit rock bottom. And I started to focus on looking after my own well-being. I bought myself a pair of roller boots. Um, I was mid thirties, you know, gone are the days of, 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 you'd think of skating around on roller boots, but it transported me back to my childhood when I was, you know, eight, nine years old at Shinewater Community Centre at the roller boot disco um, with Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody blasting out. Uh, it took me to a happy place. It helped me rediscover what was important to me. And some of the other speakers have touched on the importance of the inner child, thinking back about happier times, thinking back to where we were more carefree uh, and, and the importance of putting that back into our lives as adults, we can get caught up in the busyness. So putting that back in. So roller boots is what got me active. If someone suggested me to go for a run as something to be active for my well-being, um, I would tell you where to go because <laughs> that's not my idea of fun and enjoyment. For me, being active is as much about finding the fun in that. And so um, Roller Boots took me to Roller Derby where I found fun, friendship and fitness all in one go. So I was ticking a few boxes uh, there all in one. So, but anything in terms of being active, anything that raises our heart rate, gets our, our body moving uh, and gets us warm, which I think we're all feeling a bit today anyway, um, is, is what's good for our well-being, that physical activity. But sometimes it's simply about shifting our body to shift our mood. And that can be really, really important and can be a valuable tool in the coaching environment as well to change our position, changes our energy and changes our perspective. So I've picked up on that. Um, another way is to also potentially in, incorporate physical activity into coaching. So I know a number of coaches who uh, do, do walking coaching sessions. So they get out into the outdoors to take away from the busyness of the day to day as well. So that could be a means of bringing that into your coaching. Changing positions, say mind and body shift. And being active is about taking action. And that's what as coaches we're so often doing is we're supporting clients to take action. And for me, one of the things that helps me be active, but to also reflect is taking myself out for a walk. I do an awful lot of retraction whilst I'm out walking the dog and it helps to engage the mind and the body together. Um, so yeah, those are just some of my top tips and suggestions around being active and how it links to coaching. And then the next one is to keep learning. What does keep learning mean to you? I think many, many coaches will consider themselves um, lifelong learners, always learning. There is always something to learn. Um, we can easily associate learning to childhood and school and student days, but actually keeping learning throughout our adult life is also really, really important to our well-being. Again, we've had some examples of learning and um, talked about in some of the earlier sessions, thinking about reflecting on our first driving lesson and that journey through incompetence to competence and the learning journey we go through. Uh, and for some that might be intimidating, that first day in a new job. You know, it's important to see learning in its broadest sense and any new task, so it's just one small thing. Uh, it might be cooking a new recipe it might be taking a different route to work. That's still learning. We're learning in its broadest sense. So any new task is giving us that scope for learning. Might be something as simple as retuning the radio to a different radio channel and listening to a different voice. Watching a documentary. And in, yeah, Brian's put the word curiosity. In coaching, staying curious is a really key part of the coaching practice and is the first thing I've put on there. Uh, and CPD, Continuous Professional Development. Again, I have a plethora of books around me, uh, including uh, Joe and Zoe's book, Deciding to Coach, um, we, of which there's lots to learn in that as well. Uh, importance of supervision and learning more about ourselves and taking our reflections to supervision. 
and recognizing that also throughout any coaching relationship we have, it's a two way process of learning. We're learning from our coaches just as they're learning through that process uh, with us. We are giving that space to allow for learning. Feel free to drop into the chat any comments, any thoughts that come up for you as we're going through these. I'm going to come on to the last one there um, of give. But I'm just in case you put being open to perspectives that may not match our own. Absolutely, yes. That curiosity uh, and, and being open to perspectives, definitely. I mean, diversity and inclusion is a, also a huge uh, important part of, of my world in, in HR and so, so important to listen to others' perspectives. Uh, and learn from that, definitely. So the last of the five is give. So I'll ask again the question I've asked with each of them, what does giving mean to you? Take a moment to just think what that looks like. Some of you might initially go straight to, well, it's, it's giving money, it's giving money to charity, it's volunteering. Um, but sometimes it's as simple as giving time and giving a listening ear, holding a space for somebody to talk, that time and that space. So yeah, kindness and time to others, charity work, paying it forward, gift giving is my love language, Brian says. Yeah, for some of us, it's a crucial part of who we are and it really does make a difference. Neurologists have discovered that giving time, supporting others and being compassionate also stimulates our brain for reward. So there is, you know, again, an intrinsic uh, reason for us to benefit from giving to others. We feel happier, we feel more positive. When we see change in others, yeah, coaching, see change and value in people I coach. So there's a gift in giving there. Um, we all give to some extent, but it's important to think about the feelings that come up for us as we do that. Just simply smiling at somebody else the smile you often get back, that receiving, what you receive back from giving is so important. However, I will caveat that with that for some people who are natural givers and you know, gift giving being a love language, sometimes we can give too much. We can not receive that reciprocated um, sense of uh, reward back which can lead to burnout, to resentment, to feeling put upon. So that's why it's so important that as part of our self-care, we also think about boundaries and where we give, we give, but with boundaries. So take notice of what that looks like for you uh, and how that shows up. So yeah, picking out from a point of view of coaching, giving that time and space to our clients, giving our full attention, the two-way process of giving, giving and receiving, exchanging skills with others for mutual benefit, being part of the Coaching Crowd Business Lounge and getting this opportunity has also been an opportunity for me to exchange skills with others, you know, to exchange those coaching skills and uh, experience and learn from each other and support each other. But it's also really important that when we're giving that we do rest and recharge our energy. And for some of us, giving and giving to others is a way of recharging our energy because we're getting that feeling back. So those are the five ways to well-being. Those are my reflections and thoughts sharing with you. So I want to just give you a few questions to ponder and open up the discussion if anyone wants to add anything more. So how will you check in with yourself to establish your well-being? Because, yep, today, great opportunity. I'm talking about it. It's front and centre in the moment. You're taking notice right now. But how will you create a routine of self-care where you are checking in with yourself to establish your well-being? What does self-care and well-being need to look like for you at this point in your life? It could well be very different to what it was 10 years ago. So are you in a period of transition where self-care and well-being is a little bit different to what it might have been a year or two ago? 
Who else will benefit from you investing in your well-being? I ask that because sometimes we need outer motivation to help us to make that change. So reflecting on who else would benefit from investing in your well-being. You, know, you can't pour from an empty cup, as they say. So who else will benefit from you looking after yourself? And what will help you create the conditions for wellness in yourself and helps overseas of wellness in others? How can you shine a light on why this is so important, why looking after our well-being is so, so important? So I'll open up for any discussion anyone wants to, to add, um, but I'd love you to pop into the chat there. Any action, one action or maybe more that you're going to take from today? What will you stop? What will you start or continue to ensure that you are considering your own well-being? From a personal perspective, but for those of you that are coaches as well, and leaders, because as leaders we are coaching those around us too, what will you perhaps stop, start, or continue to bring five ways to well-being into your coaching practice? Let me just see if you're saying in the chat. Feel free if you want to also come on mic and share that and um, share what you're thinking. I love that, Katie, doing things from your heart, from purpose. It's not just another session, it's another chance to change your life. Such a powerful way to describe what coaching is, absolutely. Andrew's saying, minimize internal shoulds and shouldn'ts that represent negative self-talk. Yeah, we can really talk to ourselves in, in such a way that we wouldn't speak to anybody else. So important. Checking in with myself to ask what I really want right now is important to me. Thanks, Victoria. Something I've only learned recently as a big doer, who can also feel resentful if it hasn't made a huge difference. Yeah. Yes, asking yourself what you really need, really important. Diane saying, stop trying to please others at all times, even though people are very important to me. Start rethinking about giving and continue taking notice and keep learning. Re said, stop toxic internet consumption. Continue with exercise and eating habits. Yeah. It doesn't need to be a huge thing. It can be a really small thing that just helps get you towards where you want to be. And from there, you'll build that confidence and that encouragement, that feeling of looking after yourself more and really can snowball massively. For me, it's been getting out. Um, I got out of the habit of walking the dog um, as consistently as I should. Uh, and so yeah, so getting out and just doing 20 minutes around the block through the park and um, making sure that that's happening regardless of anything else. Um, it's really, really important habit to have built back in. Well, that is all I've got to cover off today. So opportunity for any further discussion as well, but also if you want to find me elsewhere, um, I put a tool together on the Wheel of Wellbeing. So that first QR code there will get you straight to that to, to download that. If you want to know more about the one-to-one -one coaching packages that I offer, I've got some availability come the end of September if you're interested in that. Uh, Find me on LinkedIn, that's where I mostly am, although I am on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, if you want to see all of the different links um, to me, then you can see my link tree on the, on the right hand side there as well. Thank you so much, Julie. That was such a great session. Um, loved how you paced us through that and gave us those gentle inquiry questions as we went through. And, you know, as you say, what well-being is for us, sometimes we make assumptions, don't we, that it stays the same or it should be certain things because of messages we might get elsewhere. And how often do we actually stop and really connect with our own energy, um, our own values and, and kind of relearn who we are and what we need right here, right now in the moment. Um, I'm sure everybody really enjoyed your session. Um, 
please connect in with Julie, um, you know, in those different spaces, LinkedIn and, and in those, uh, using these different QR codes. Um, really hope you've all had a great time um, today joining us at the Coaching Crowd Summit. I've seen a number of you in all the sessions during the day, which has been amazing. I hope you've been managing to stay cool there. And I just really want to say a huge thank you to you, Julie, for uh, helping us to, to sign off at the end of our first day of the Coaching Summit. Um, you really have got so much knowledge and wisdom to be able to share with people, um, both as a mental health first aid instructor and as a coach yourself. So thank you so much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. I'm just going to stop the recording.